Tonight's call to worship is taken from Psalms, excuse me, taken from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Begin reading at verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of, ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come on, let's pray together. Father, we praise you and bless your holy name in this house today. Thank you, God, for in your infinite wisdom, for making and sending us Jesus, for making the world and then allowing us to be a part of it. Thank you for making the things of this world for us to enjoy, but for us to use to glorify your name. Thank you for choosing us to be your children. And God, as we are gathered in this place tonight, we pray that you would prepare our hearts to hear your word. And we, when, when we hear, we pray we will obey. Now, God, we ask that you would break up the ground so that our hearts will be ready soil. We ask you, God, right now to open our eyes that we might see. We ask you, God, to fill us full of your Holy Spirit so that we might do your will in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen and thank God. I'm going to ask if you just sit quietly and think about what God is up to in your life, how he's moving. Amen. Any prayer requests or praise reports tonight? Prayer requests, praise reports tonight. Apparently not. Sure. Is the Gertrude Jenkins? Okay. Okay. Marsh Mott. Oh, okay. Okay, then. I hope y'all heard all those prayer requests. But Sister Magnolia's going in for 
heart surgery in the morning. Yes. Yes, sir. Huh? Who was this? Stephen Moore. Okay. Wolf. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's pray for him. Did you have your hand up, Sister Wolf? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Yeah, and for cancer. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, Reverend Hopkins was on an assignment, work assignment in D.C. Let's be in prayer. We pray for his safety and his success as well. Anybody else? You're going to have a heart surgery? Is that? Mm. Wow. Okay. That's, that's exactly right. Wow. Boy, technology is advanced now. Yeah. I said technology is advanced. You know, when they start dealing with your heart. Huh? Oh, okay then. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll pray you get whatever you need to be healthy. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Okay then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a battle. That's going to be a real, <laughs> yeah, let's be in prayer for, for that. Uh, election that God's person will will be uh, chosen. Anybody else? Yeah, Rod Warren with a landslide. Yeah. Amen. Thank y'all for praying for him. Yes, ma'am. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, my wife was telling me that. Oh, my God. Did y'all hear what she said? All of her student loans, she received a letter saying that all of her student loans have been paid in full. That means that she no longer owes the government. Now, that's a praise report, eh? <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Yes, ma'am. Sure was. Yeah, amen. And that was a tight race, too, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, thank God. Sister Patsy Jones, you know, her son is sheriff from the, of Hines County. The first, the youngest black sheriff in the state. So we're proud of him. Yeah, and thank God for his reelection. Anybody else? Why won't party won't release him? Yeah. If, huh? Oh, was it released? I mean, I'm, forgive me for for asking over the microphone, like, but I'm just I'm just I'm I'm baffled how they can keep you in jail. But Sister Thompson says that he's already been released. The news says. Yeah, well, I hope so. I mean, because that's scary. They can hold you in jail, and you've been proven innocent. You know, they had film and everything of him being in Hattiesburg. That's scary. You know, so make sure you don't be riding dirty. <laughs> that's all I got to say to you. <laughs> but make sure you want to up and up, because you don't want to get in the hands of law enforcement. Anybody else? Somebody feel, anybody feel led to lead us tonight? Lead us in prayer.
this one. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, clap your hands, give God praise. Remember to wear purple, have this announcement on Sunday, November 12th, in honor of All Hammers Awareness. Wear purple on Sunday. Come on, put your hands together tonight. God is good. God is great. I always love to say that verse. He's great and greatly to be praised. He deserves all we have. And all we have is our praise. And he deserves our worship. Do you believe it tonight? Do you believe it tonight? He deserves our worship. Hallelujah. And he said that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Marcus is here with me tonight, and we're going to open up our praise and worship service tonight. Ask that you join in with us and give God the glory because he is so deserving of the praise. We don't have to have a whole lot, do we? But it said, where two or three are gathered in my name, then I'll be in the midst. Come on. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus tonight. We're gonna bless that name. All right. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. No other name. No other name. No other name. No other name. 
no other name can save no other name can heal no other name can deliver no other name no other name no other name hey what's his name what's his name what's his name what's his name I got saved calling on the name of Jesus I got saved calling on the name of Jesus 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 oh Jesus oh Jesus oh bless that wonderful name of Jesus oh bless that wonderful name of Jesus bless that wonderful name of Jesus no other name I know no other name I know anybody love him tonight anybody love Jesus tonight we're just gonna worship him and we'll be done I love you I love you I love you Lord today why just because you can for me yeah in such a special way that is why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah tonight. Hallelujah. That's why my heart. Yeah. My heart is filled with so much praise. Yeah, I gotta praise him. Oh, yeah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, you can help us say. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love, I love you, Lord, today. today. Hallelujah. Can you tell him? Because you care for me. Thank you, God. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. Anybody want to praise you? So why my heart is filled with praise. And you know what else? Oh, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you, to you, to you. You paid the price for me. Oh, way back on Calvary. That is why I praise, praise you. you. I bless I your name. You I give you glory. And I magnify, I magnify your, name. your name. Yeah, Lord. That's why my, my heart is free. We praise. That is why my, my heart is free. My heart is free. You save me, how you kept me, how you love me. That's why, That's why my heart, heart is, is filled with, with praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's why, why my heart, heart is filled 
is filled. It is filled, yeah. Hallelujah with praise. Hallelujah tonight. Can you just think about a reason? Let you have the bless his name. Hallelujah. That's why your heart hey, ought to be filled, 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 filled with praise. Yeah. That's why my heart is filled. I give you praise. I know Pastor got to come, but I could stay right there. I got so many reasons to talk about him tonight. Yeah, that's why my heart, hallelujah, is filled We got to stop waiting for Sunday because we might not make it. But on a Wednesday night, anybody want to bless him and say, that's why my heart. Is filled, yeah, 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 with praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise. Hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen. Thank God for, for our praise leaders. Amen. Come on, give God the praise. Worship leaders. Which brings me to our lesson tonight, beginning at the throne. Uh, that's pretty much what this is about. We've, we're moving into part two. We've covered several parts, and there tonight we talk we talked about an open door. There's a lot of incredible doors in the world that we walk through. The doorways to the king's palace, doorway to great museums. This this summer we visited the great. African History Museum in D.C. We walk through the doors and you can just see the history exuding out of that, that building. There are some incredible doorways and gateways in the world, but, but nothing like you see in the book of Revelation tonight. In Revelation 3, you remember we talked about it. You find a door that Jesus talked about. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Remember we talked about that? He said, If you, if anyone would hear and open the door, I will come in. And when you let Jesus into your life, he changes you forever. You're never been, you've never been the same. That's why some of you are at Bible study tonight because you, the more you learn about him, the more you want to know about him. Yeah, you want to get to know him better and better. That's why this, this lesson tonight takes us to Revelation chapter 4 and, ch and chapter 5. If you brought your Bibles tonight, you know you can follow me along those, in, in, those, in those, chapter, those chapters. But you know, when God came into our, and our, our hearts, you know, our lives were changed forever. But when we come to Revelation chapter 4, there's even a more incredible door that he talks about, verse 1. After this, then I, John, looked, and there before me was a door standing open, listen to this, y'all, in heaven, in heaven. And, and immediately, we, we, you know, we move into the third division. In other words, what, what John is saying, you know, in chapter 1, we talked about Jesus. In chapter 2 and 3, we talked about the, the, the churches of Asia Minor. But now, God has invited John to, open, to walk through the door of heaven and see the future. When he's in heaven, you know, things are happening uh, in the future, but they're happening as if they are right now. 
when he's in heaven. But John saw what would happen. He saw the future with God. I mean, how many people would, be, would love to have an invitation to go to heaven? To see what it's like up there. And that's what God gave John. And John comes back and report what he saw. As beginning, what he saw beginning in chapter 4 and 5. You know, the first part we talked about Jesus. Then we talked about the, the churches of Asia Minor. But tonight we move into talking about what John saw when he walked through that open door. What he saw about, about the future. Three vital perspectives for understanding Revelation. First of all, you've got to remember these three vital perspectives. You've got to understand Revelation from the position of the Old Testament, of the Old Testament. How can you understand the last book if you don't understand the first book? So you've got to go back. You know, these people, they knew these signs. They knew what John was talking about. You and I don't know what he's talking about because sometimes we don't read our Bible as often enough. And so it's the Old Testament, and, and, and then, then it, you know, it was first doing, written during first century times. You know, John lived many, many of those, those, those times. He, he uses very familiar uh, uh, terms that were familiar with these, with these people, and they knew what, what seven meant. They knew, they knew what the stars meant, and they knew what the seals meant. And then, then, and then uh, you're feeling tonight, you've got to understand the time. You have to understand time in heaven because John is standing in heaven and when he sees the revelation, time in heaven is different than time on earth because he sees it as already happening. It had not happened on earth, but God showed John what would happen in the future when he was in heaven. It was as if it was already happening. I wish somebody knew what I was talking about tonight. And so, and so he, he, he takes him to heaven and, and God showing all the wonderful things that he's going to do in, 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 in the future. And, and John saw it. He saw it happening already. And he, he was going back and forth in heaven. Even, even when God was giving the revelation, he went to the future. And then he went back to the past. And he went to the middle. He was going back and forth. But God was showing him all the things that, that was going to happen. And here's another feeling that we need to make sure that we are, uh, uh, have the right attitude and understand the revelation. Listen, here's a feeling. Don't worry, but worship. It's not, it's not given to us for us to worry if you really, you know, want to understand the book of Revelation. Don't worry, but spend this time worshiping, worshiping God. Have an attitude of worship, of ab, ab, absolute worship. That's crucial if you're going to go through Revelation. And, you know, as we step through the pages of Revelation, recognizing God for who he is, we have to worship him. We recognize God for his greatness. We have to worship him and the incredible things that he's doing in the universe. And then in, 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 Revelation, in the rest of New Testament, the word throne is used 11 times. In Revelation, the word is used 42 times. Just, just to show the importance this, book's, this book of Revelation places on, on the throne. 11 times. In, 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 in chapter 4 alone. And the fact that the, you know, the throne means that there's absolute control by God. And he, you know, and, and you can't alter what God is doing because God sits on the throne. Nobody can undo what God has already done. That's why we believe once you're saved, you're always saved. You can lose your fellowship, but your relationship with God is still intact. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And so if we're not, we're not convinced of that, if we're, we're not convinced that we actually hear God's voice when he speaks to us and when we hear him, we can obey us because, obey him because he gives us the strength to do that. Then, so he starts out by talking about what he saw on the throne. John walks into heaven and the voice, he says, the voice I hear speaking to me was like a trumpet saying, come up here. You know, uh, there's not but two other people who had this experience. You remember Isaiah went to heaven. Remember Paul went to the third heaven. And now here John is being invited to go to heaven so God can show him some things so that his people will not worry. This is what's happening on the throne. And God is sitting on the throne. And God was so amazing. He was so uh, uh, phenomenal until he only appeared to him in colors. That's the fit, fit, that's the feeling in, in beauty. Because if any man see the holiness of God, he will not live. 
We can't stand to see the whole, the God's holiness in his completeness. And that's why he showed Moses his backside. If God showed us his complete holiness, we would die on the spot. And so he show, shows John's colors and beauty. And, you know, that, 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 was, that, that was someone sitting on the throne. But the Bible tells us no man has ever seen God in, in any time. If, if he saw him, his holiness, he, he would die. He would die immediately. John goes to heaven and he gets to see the image of God. The first and the last stones of the garments of the priest. And then he talks about, he sees God in jasper, which, which is clear, which is clear diamond in the word. And in, in that, in that jasper means that God is pure. When he saw the pure light coming from the throne, it represents the purity of God. I'm so glad that I serve a God who doesn't lie who's not full of deceitfulness, who smile on my face and stare at me in my back. I'm so glad I serve a God who's not moody, speak to me today and don't act like he don't know me tomorrow. I'm so glad that I serve a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever in our lives. He, God is purity. And then, then there's the Cornelian red like ruby. He saw this image of God that represents two. First of all, it rep represents the wrath of God and the forgiveness of God. See, what we want to talk about in church, we want to talk about God's, forgive, God's uh, forgiveness, but we don't want to talk about God's wrath. God has a wrath. Yes, he will forgive, but, 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 he, but he saw the red. And, you know, that's what people say sometimes when they see folk getting mad that they saw red. You know, sometimes people can get angry. Sometimes you can get angry and turn red. You know, when black folk turn red, you know you're really angry. You know, you... So, so we... John, John says, I, I saw God, the image of God, and, and, you know, the color of red. You know, when I see the color of red, it reminds me of the cross. Jesus' blood on Calvary that died, that, shed, that, that he shed for you and I. You and I wouldn't be saved without the blood. I don't think we put enough emphasis on the blood in the New Testament church, in the modern-day church. The blood of Jesus has covered our sins. It satisfied the justice of heaven. And not only did he see the jasper and the cornelian, but, but, but the throne is a place of awe, A-W-E. Our God is an awesome God. Yeah, John, John the apostle wrote about God in his first letter. He says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness. And if there's no darkness and in God, then there ought not be no darkness in you and I. We ought to give up our dark deeds, especially when we come to God's house. But he talks about what he saw on the throne. Then he talks about what he saw around the throne. God said, told John, he, opened, he left the door open. He says, I want you to come up here. I got, to, I got a message I want you to take back to the world. This is what's going to happen in the future. Then he saw around the throne a rainbow. He sees it. We, we only, you know, get, you know, and on earth we only get to see half of the rainbow. You know why? Because you got to be in the, up in the air to see the whole rainbow. But, but John, when he was in heaven, he saw the whole rainbow, the entire rainbow circling the throne. It's, and it's green like emerald and, and, you know, green like life. It reminds us of the flood. Remember, after the, after the flood, Noah and his, and his family got off the flood, off the boat, rather, and they saw a rainbow, and that was God's promise to never destroy the work, earth like that again. Well, I want you to know God has made some promises to us. And while John is in heaven, John not only sees the promises that God has given his people, but John also sees the prayers that have been sent up to heaven and God was ready to answer the prayers. And I want you to know right now tonight that God does not ignore your prayers. Sometimes we pray prayers and they're not answered until we see, uh, until we die in our and our, and our children are, are, get the answer to our, our prayers. But the throne is a place of promise. The awesome, incredible promise of God. Promises of God. Every promise that is kept in this, in this world is based on God's word. An emanated word. It originated in the throne and the power. And the awesome power of God. He sees the prayers of the saints. That's you know that, that I'm talking. I'm, talk, I'm talking to you tonight about this because you need to know that heaven, heaven is God's super headquarters. It's, 
It's, it's, it's the central location from which every promise that is kept in the universe. If you're standing on God's promises, I want you to know it started in God's, at God's throne. It started in heaven. You can claim it and stand on it in the word like, like that promise that all things work together for the good. I want you to know it started in heaven. And God has to release the power for that promise to be fulfilled. The prayers you prayed are in heaven right now. And God is ready to release them at the proper time. Can you imagine what John saw? John saw all of that when he was in glory. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to miss that. I don't want to miss that. No, I just don't. I don't want to miss it. I want to make sure I see all that, that, that glory and all that beautiful too. And then from the throne, he saw not only who sit well, on the throne, he saw around the throne, but, but he saw also f from the throne. He says from the throne, what was coming from the throne comes flashes of light and rumbling and reels of thunder. And the throne is the place where judgment begins. You know, sin uh, was, was, was sent by Satan originally and accepted and it's accepted by us. You know, sin came into the world uh, and, to, and it tore God's creation apart. And, and, and that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need a Savior. And those who come to him, the Bible says that those who come to Jesus has passed out of judgment. That's why the saints, the, 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 the believers in Christ, we, listen, we won't be judged for our salvation, but our works will be judged. Why are you giving? Why are you teaching? Why are you serving? Why are you singing? Why are you preaching? Why are you coming? Our, listen, we'll be judged for our works. And what does God judge? Our motives. Sometimes our motives are not pure. Sometimes we do things for public applause. Sometimes we do things because we want to pat on the back. Sometimes we do things because we want to be a, a rewarded before the whole, whole congregation. But I want God to, to pay me. Because can't nobody pay me like God. Can't nobody reward me like him. If people ignore what you're doing, don't worry about it. God just got a bigger reward for you. And sometimes people will ignore you. Sometimes people become too familiar with you. Sometimes people are jealous and don't want to give you credit for what you've done. Don't worry about it. When your time comes, God, the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. And he'll give you what? The desires of your heart. Don't let what people don't give you keep you from not giving God what he deserves. And that is all the glory, all the praise, all the honor that you can muster up tonight. And so it comes from the phone. It says one morning, and you, you know, when we, we know what this means, this, this picture has, you know, has been, been lost forever. The, the throne is a place of judgment. Notice what it says in Exodus 19 and 16. It says the same thing. When God revealed himself to Moses one morning on the third day there was thunder and lightning and thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp did what? Tremble. The throne is a place of judgment. We don't like that. We, you know, we, 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 live, we live in that, in a day and age where we, where even as believers, we, we know that God is going to judge the world, but Something in us that we don't, we don't like it. We, we like God to be good and kind to everybody, and he is. But, but, but not, not a God of, of, of judgment. No, we don't want that kind of God. You know, but, but I want you to know, if judgment is not real, then we don't need grace. We need grace because there will be a judgment. And that's why we, that's why we, want, that's why we cherish grace. Because God, that's God's nature. God gives us what we don't deserve. That's grace. God holds back what we do deserve. That's mercy because that is the nature of God. And I don't know about y'all, but I praise God for his nature, for his mercy and grace so that I don't have to face judgment in my life. Because your life and my life suggest that we deserve to, sit, to die and go to hell. But God says, no, not guilty. I've sent my son to die on the cross because sin was ravaging your life, but God saved you. And somebody ought to give him praise and just for salvation tonight. I thank him. Then, then he sees what's circling the throne. 
You know, what's, what's circling the throne? We, we, we're, we're, that we're four living creatures, understand? You know, anyone reading this, these words that day would, would understand who these creatures were. And notice what it says in Isaiah 6, seraphims, serap, seraphims standing above him, each having six wings. You know, we sang songs about six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did what? Look, look how, how the exact descriptions are when we, when, we, when we go, when these people go and they see God. They, uh, they, see, they see the throne. They, but they all saw the exact same thing. Ezekiel saw the exact same thing. When people see heaven, they see the exact same thing. Look at Ezekiel. And then the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was that of a man. Their face looked like this. Each of the four had four faces of a man. On the right side, each had the face of a lion. On the left side, the face of an ox. Each also had what? They had four faces. Each of the four had, had, had faces of a man. And, and each had the face of a lion. And on the left side, the ox. And also there was a face of an, of an eagle. And a lot, of Christians, Christmas have, a lot of Christians have disagreed over what these uh, uh, symbols mean. You know, their face, these faces means but we, we do know that they mean that they are as different functions of level of government because the number four is a symbol it signifies government for, for sure the throne and God has different functions of government in on, 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 in his creation uh, and, and you know that may not make sense to us but it made sense to them the wings shows that we ought to be quick to serve God Y'all not be, y'all not be slow. Y'all not be slow to church. You ought to be available when God called you to be on this program. You ought to be available and quick. You know, I see some people who have an opportunity to be on stage for God and to praise God's name and to preach or to sing or to speak or to walk or to serve. And they're, they're, they're so lackadaisical. They take it for granted. But I want you to know, I want to be quick to preach. Because God didn't have to use you. I want to be, if I got a voice to sing, I want to be ready like an eagle. I want to go up there before time and be ready because I appreciate God leaving a place for me. Somebody ought to give him praise in this house today. God, God didn't have to use you when he wanted to call a servant. That's why he talks about Wings, we ought to be ready immediately. God, if you need it, you ought to be saying with, with the prophet, Lord, hear my eyes, send me. I'm ready. I'm available. I may not be as good as sister so-and-so. I may not be as, 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 as holy as brother so-and-so, but I'm ready. And I'm willing to serve. If you are serving in God's house, I want you to know it is a privilege. Because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And if God gave it to you, it's for you to use to glorify his, 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 his name. Whatever God gave you, do it quickly and be ready. And then he talks about the eyes. It's almost, you know, it almost sounds ugly when you read it. To, to, you know, to us maybe, but, but not to them. To them it was a picture of beauty because it's a picture of intelligence and insight. It's a picture of of perception, they, they, they can see things and, and understand God's creation in ways that no one else can do. And you know when you're saved, you ought to have, the Bible says that God, God's commandments makes us wiser than our enemies. And if you're saved today and you're walking in the world, you're spending time in the world, if you come into Bible study and you're coming to church to, 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 to be taught by, 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 by uh, be taught God's word by the preacher, I want you to know God will make, give you more intelligence than normal people. God will make you sharper than normal people. You'll be able to see a, through a fake and a phony. It won't take you but 15 minutes. You know when folk are running the game. You know because there's a discerning spirit that God gives you when you come to Bible study. Every time you hear the word, it sharpens your spiritual perspective. And so, so, so the, the eyes represents 
a picture of intelligence and insight and because the throne is a place of holiness. Are y'all getting these feelings? Okay, good. The, the throne is a place of holiness. I'm moving fast and I won't hold you too long. God's holiness. What, what, did, they, what did they, what did these three, these four around the throne do? They, they seem to be having some governmental functions in God's creation. Never stop saying, Look, look at what they look, look what they do. They never stop saying, holy, holy, holy. In the Old Testament, when 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 Ezekiel, when they, when Isaiah went to heaven, they were still saying, Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. Then over in Revelation, when John go to heaven, they still saying, Holy. <laughs> because God is holy. <laughs> Anybody know? You know, we said like this sometime at funerals, he never makes a mistake. <laughs> And whatever he does is always best for everybody involved. And I, I thank God that he is holy. And they never stop. The throne is a place for God's holiness. Holy. Can you imagine saying holy, holy, holy all day long? And then before the throne, there, there, there are 24 elders. The two main views of the 24 elders, you know, there's, there's a lot of different teaching about this. These two ways of you know, there, 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 there are two ways of looking at this, you know, no doubt about it. There are, there are great believers on both sides. Some believe they are angels, the 24 elders. Some believe they are believers, the 24 elders. Some believe they are both. They are the 12 tribes, the 12 apostles, 24 division of priests. You know, this, this goofy thing, there is, the, there is John who's who's watching this, you know. In fact, when John saw this, he saw, he saw himself. Because John is one of the 12 apostles. And then, and then, 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 you know, not only did John see himself, but he also uh, he saw, he saw you and I too, he saw us. Oh, yeah, because, because, I mean, you know that, that it's, that, that, you know, it's more than just the priests in the Judaism and the priests in the Catholic Church. The Bible says that we are priests, that we're part of the priesthood of, of, of Jesus Christ. And I, I thank God the Bible says that we'll sit on the throne with Jesus and help him judge the world. And I, I'm so glad tonight that if I'm saved that I am a priest. You don't have to be a preacher to minister to somebody. If you're saved, you can minister to your mama. You can minister to your grandchildren. You can minister to hurting people out the church on Sunday. You can minister to the homeless person because you have the power of God witness on the inside of you. Go and tarry in Jerusalem and you will be doing do it with power from on high. And then he says, what? And you'll be my witnesses. And I want you to know that when you open your mouth, and you're full of the Holy Spirit, your words have power. That's why you ought to be careful what you say to people because you can either tear them down or build them up. You know, sometimes our words, our words can be like an elevator. You can take them to the top floor, take them to the bottom floor. That's why we've got to be careful what we, what, 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 what we say. They're, 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 they're representing they're, they're all these people, 12 tribes and 12 apostles and two divisions, 20 divisions of priests. They are, they are all representing the, the, the believers from the ages and worshiping him, praising him, and have their crowns before the throne. The throne is a place of, of worship. You keep looking at the throne, you'll find out that the throne is a place, that's a feeling, is a place of worship wherever Honor comes our way. Whatever glory comes our way. That. And you don't know that when we get to heaven that God's going to give us a crown and when we get the crown, we're going to give it back to him. Do you know that I know that? That's what the Bible says. What, 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 what that says is that what that means is that, that when, when, we, when we are rewarded, when we are rewarded, God gives us a crown in heaven, we'll, we'll give it back to him because we'll be saying, God, I couldn't have done anything without you. Lord, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have gone to school and finished without you. 
God, I couldn't have played in the church without you. God, I wouldn't have come to church without you. God, I wouldn't be healthy without you. God, I wouldn't have my job. I wouldn't have my house. I wouldn't have my car. God, I would have lost my mind if you didn't keep me. That's what you'll give the glory back to him because he deserves all the glory, all the honor and praise. Yes, you'll get a crown, but if you got good sense, you'll give the crown back to him because the only reason you got a crown is because you know the king. Whatever you want in life, I don't care if it was a freebie, it's because of God. You may have been in Walmart and they call your name. They didn't have to call your name and you want a, a easy big hug and I don't know what you want. Maybe a free haircut, you ought to give God the glory. If you pull up to the parking lot and you at the supermarket and, you're, and all of a sudden you got a, a parking space right by the bill, you ought to say, God, I give you praise. I give you honor that I didn't have to walk today. You gave me, you let me know that, that, I, that you got me on your mind. Somebody ought to give him praise in this house today for all of the favor he's given you in your life. You didn't deserve it, but mercy and grace, surely goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. I don't know about y'all, but I can testify. Surely goodness and mercy has followed you all the days of your life. Anybody know God's been good to you? You want to get it? You want to? You talk about I want? I want? I'm going through the throne of God. I want to get to the throne of God. You can't get there unless you know you need to worship. You need to worship Him because you wouldn't even be at the throne had it not been for Him. And God, I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. Well, I got to hurry, but I'm preaching right now. Then chapter 5, this, this scroll is, is going to, to begin to open up to us what God wants to do in the future. Then it, Number 6 is in the hands of the one on the throne, this, this scroll, this incredible scroll sealed with, with seven seals. Remember, we talked about it, if you understand. Uh, today, you know, the Old Testament, you, you got to, you, you want to understand what's going on today, you got to understand these Old Testament signs and symbols, and I'll give you the meaning of it as best I can, but as best I can. Times in the Bible, are, you know, really helps us to understand the book of Revelation. The seven seals in both Roman and Jewish law, you got it on your outline, represents a document of inheritance. You know? You know, Jesus is the one who, who, who helps us gain our inheritance. You, some of you may not know, you've heard about this Kingsman redeeming law, redeemer law. In Jewish law, Jewish customs, they had a, a scroll that was a seal with seven seals on it. In Jewish law, you, 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 could, you could lose your possessions, but but then they had a time called the year of Jubilee. You could get all of it back. But if you're going to get all of it back, you got to have a kinsman, a kinsman redeemer to stand for you. And so that, that's, that's what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying that, listen, that God gave the world to Adam, but Adam lost it to sin. And you know, uh, and, 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 and Jesus Christ came to give it back to us, our inheritance. And I, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I want you to know that we ought to thank God for the stuff we lost because God says that we can get it back. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, 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 that seven, number seven means perfection. And, 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 and they knew that. And, they, and so, so, so and Jesus is our kingdom redeemer. Who, who, who is it? You know, and, and the Bible says that John began to cry. He began to cry when he saw this and he saw the seals and nobody was there to open the seal. John began to cry because guess what? He knew he needed a friend to open the seal. And then, then God revealed to him that it was Jesus who opened the seal so that we can get back what we lost. You know, he, and, and that's why on your outline it says that he's worthy. He, he, he's 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 worthy. It's, it's not hard to see Jesus, you know, our, as our king, kingsman, redeemer, the one, the one who brought things back, you know. It, 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 John didn't, didn't weep and weep and weep 
because he didn't know, you know, what was in the scroll. He, no, no, he knew he needed a great friend to be found. And, and, and right in this book, it says, who is worthy? And it says, it says, worthy is the lamb, the lamb of God. Jesus is worthy. The, the, the buyback. You see, we were, we were lost in sin, but God brought our salvation. And it says again that he's worthy. John weeps and cries in verse 5. And then he finds out that Jesus is he. Who, who is this Jesus? It's right, right, this is the filling, the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The powerful one. Jesus came out. You remember, y'all know the story of Jesus, how he came out of the line of Judah, the tribe of Judah. And this is how he's going to come the, the second time. In the second coming, Satan has control over the world. Adam lost it, but Jesus will get it all back for us. I said, Jesus will get it all back for us. That's why we don't have to be afraid of it. Everything you lost, God, that you need was your part of your inheritance. God says you're going to get it back. I give him praise tonight. Can anybody help me thank, thank the lound, the lound of the tribe of Judah? You know, Jesus is that. Then he, then he talks about the root of the tribe of Jesse. Remember, he reminds us of not only Abraham and his son, but, but of Jesse and his son David. You know, he is, and he's the one who, who takes the king's redeemer in. And in the end, who, who looks like a lamb. He said right here in your outline, looking like a slain lamb. But, but, he's, but he's standing in the center of the throne. Oh, God, that's, that, that's an awesome picture, isn't it? Jesus is, is standing in heaven. And, and as John views him, he's able to, to still see the scars. Oh, I want to see him. Y'all, we sing that song right here in this church. But since I was a little boy, Miss Wilmore Baxter, oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. They are to sing forever for his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, forever to real. Somebody ought to give him praise in this house today. Listen, the only stars will be that, that that will be in heaven will be the scars of Jesus. Won't be any scars on you. But there will be scars on the Savior so that we will be reminded every time we see him in heaven of the price he paid for our salvation. You'll see Jesus, that he brought our salvation. God took John to heaven and showed him these marvelous, these marvelous things. Look at the lamb slain. Then with seven horns and seven eyes representing, you know, you representing seven spirits. Uh, the, you know, the lamb has seven horns and seven uh, eyes representing seven spirits. The horn represents power and the eyes represent discernment and understanding. And the seven spirits, we learned earlier in our study that they represent the Holy Spirit. Uh, number seven uh, uh, means perfection. So seven spirits representing the perfect spirit. When we get to heaven, we'll have a perfect spirit. We'll have a perfect attitude. We won't be mad at anybody. We won't be, we won't be holding grudges. We won't be thinking about what people did to us when we were, when we were children. We won't be hurt because of molestation. We won't be let, hurt because folk got us fired. We won't be put in, put in jail falsely accused. We won't be held in jail for something we didn't do. Somebody ought to give God the praise in this house today. There'll be a perfect spirit. And the throne is a place of worthiness. I said the throne is a place of worthiness. There is no more worthy place to be in all of the universe than the throne of God. And you come to that throne at the end of chapter 5 and it builds and it builds and it builds and the elders and creatures begins to sing. Look at what they're singing. You are what? Worthy. <laughs> then they, they look and then they, and, I, and they said, I heard a voice of many angels. And then he says, I saw a number that no man could count. He says, I saw 100 million and they were singing the same things. Not only is the elder singing, but the number that no one could count is singing, you are worthy. 
Hallelujah. Y'all sitting around here playing and getting mad with people on this earth. I ain't going to let nobody make me die and miss this. I want to see Jesus and I want to be able to join that heavenly choir and say, you're worthy. Every, then it says every creature saying you're worthy. In other words, everybody in heaven going to be singing one song. It ain't going to be your song. It ain't going to be your song. It ain't going to be, it's going to be God's song. Can you imagine that moment? You know, the, you know, most theologians say that God's throne is, is, is the universal North Star. Y'all heard the North Star? They say that's where God's throne is really located. Sometimes we see the North Star way off somewhere. It's just the guiding power in all the universe. That's why Philippians, I love that, that passage in Philippians. It says that one day at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is what? And listen, y'all. While John was in heaven, God let John see that day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, every nation, every nationality, everybody who denied it, everybody who said he wasn't real, every John saw that day when he was in heaven. And John, you know what John did. John, the Bible says that John, he lost words. He couldn't speak because sometimes you just need to close your mouth and just look at what God has done for you. God gets, John gets to see all of that. He gets to see the end. And he gets to see everybody bowing they knee. Look at you. Look at Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. You may not do it today, but one day everybody's going to do it. You may not do it in church. You may not do it at Wednesday night Bible study, but one day you're going to be forced to do it. Whether you want to or not, everybody's going to do it. Even the demons are going to do it. So you may as well learn to praise him now. Say, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Listen to what he's saying. Name that's above all names, and that at the name of Jesus, every knee sh should, should bow. He says, in heaven, on earth, under the earth, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. God, I bless your name. Come on, he's worthy, church. How many know he's worthy? He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our thanksgiving. I don't want to miss that moment. And so please, if you're not sure that you're saved tonight, don't let me teach all the way through Revelation and you die and miss this glorious moment. God was so magnificent to Jesus and the Lord was so magnificent to look at on his throne until he had to show John images of himself because he couldn't bear to see him in his complete holiness. So he appeared in jewels and diamonds and pearls, the beauty of God. And one day we'll be able to see him, the Bible says, face, face to face. And we'll be, we'll be known as we were known. In other words, you won't have to put on no ads up there because everybody will know the real you. You don't have to pretend up there because everybody will know the real you. Won't be no facades. Won't be no ass. You won't have to walk around with your head all in the air. Thinking you're privileged because of you. If you any privileges we have is because of God. And I praise his name. Please don't miss the book of Revelation. We're walking right through it. If you, were, you didn't get excited tonight, I want you to know you better check your relationship with God. God just showed us a glimpse of what a heaven is going to be like. A glimpse. You think I'm coming to church all these years so I can miss heaven? Because when you stand before him, you, guess what? Your husband won't be able to drive you. Your wife won't be able to fix your breakfast for you. 
No, you'll be standing all by yourself, just you and Jesus. You won't be able to blame your pastor or blame your church. You won't be able to blame your friends or blame some, somebody who, who did something to you when you were a child. God's going God's to say, I healed you from all that. And you still kept right on raising hell. When you stand before him, you're going to have to give an account for your life. I'm closing, but you know what's you know what's wrong with the church? We do not fear God anymore. You don't fear God because if you did, you wouldn't say the things. You wouldn't do the things. You wouldn't come to church like, you wouldn't act like you act if you really fear God. Yes, God is kind and God is good and God is love, but God's got a raft. We need to get back to fear of God. I don't mean horror. I don't mean horrified fear. I mean respect and reverence for Him, a worshipful, a worshipful spirit, a worshiping spirit. Where we know and we act like He deserves first place in our life. Because you may have everything down here. You may look like you're on your way to heaven in a house because that's how we size people up in their relationship with God. If they got a nice house and a nice, nice clothes and they got a nice car, you can have all that stuff and be on your way to. You better make sure that you have a relationship. And some of us are too old to be playing these games. You're too close to your death day to be playing these games. Make sure your relationship with God is intact. All you can do is tell your neighbors. All you can do is tell your family. All you can do is tell your wife. All you can do is tell your husband. All you can do is tell your children. All I can do is preach to y'all every Sunday. If you don't listen, don't take it in. You know, the, the, the Bible says that the simpleton needs to be struck before he bleeds. It's in Proverbs. Some people will never learn just by giving instructions. Those are wise people. Some people have to have a living example to learn. They only learn by the hard way. And God will give you a living example. Yes, he will. The word has been preached. If you don't listen, then guess what? Then God teaches you the hard way by giving you a living example. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? How many people in this room want to learn by instructions? How many want to learn by obeying the word, listening to the word, and then obeying the word? I don't need you to strike me, God. No, I want to learn because... Of what I've learned in Bible study in church on Sunday morning. The door of the church is open. Somebody in this room tonight, wherever you are, you come. You come. You just got a glimpse of heaven. If you're not saved tonight, please, you don't want to miss this place. It's too wonderful. It's too marvelous. It's too beautiful. It's too amazing. The mere fact that God even gives us a chance to get there, I'm amazed. Somebody in this room, you need salvation. Somebody's watching online. You need Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Root of Jesse, the Lamb who was slain for your redemption. Reverend, you don't know I lost it all. I lost my mind, I lost my joy, I lost my peace, I lost my marriage. God can give it all back. Because he is a redeemer. If you trust him tonight, you can get it all back. And even better than it was before. But it starts with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It starts, listen, 
when you confess your sins and you walk down this aisle, get back in right fellowship with God. Somebody's looking for a church home. This is where you fit. This is where you grow. This is where you feel led to come by the Holy Spirit. You do it tonight. Don't put it off. You may not be in this place in your heart again. If you feel moved tonight, you come. Jesus. Come on, church. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will save your soul. Right now, you ought to come. Right to come. come on, right now. Father, we bless your name tonight. We give you praise, honor, and glory in this place. Thank you, God, for showing John so he could show us a glimpse of what heaven looks like and feel like. Help us not to miss it, God. Don't let us be fooled by false salvation. Don't let us be deceived by being slowful. Help us to be quick like eagle wings to come to your service. Help us to be intelligent. Help us to have discernment, God, that is keen so that we know to do your will is the best thing that we can do. Now, God, as we leave this place tonight, we pray we'll never leave your presence. As we leave this gathering, pray we we'll never leave your grace. In Jesus' matchless name, if you love him, say amen. God bless you. May hope, pray and hope you have a great day night. Be safe going home. May his peace and favor rest upon your life. We love you. And we want nothing but the best for you. Those who have been watching by the way of the internet, we thank God for your tuning in as well. May he bless you. We love you. We want the best for you as well. To wear purple on Sunday, November 12th, honor of Alzheimer's awareness. Wear purple on Sunday.